as a teacher, you're going to spend most of your time in the feature area called Teacher Tools. This is where you're going to be able to manipulate and see what your students are doing on their Chromebooks. So I'm going to ch choose Teacher Tools. The next thing I need to do is select the class that I want to start. And I'm going to choose my Music Theory class. And I'm going to choose Start Class. Now you have nice instructions right here. Since I don't have to worry about deleting any students here, they're all my students are in that class session. I'm going to say Start Class. I can say how long that class goes in two ways. I can either put in the exact time, or if I want to, I can put in a stop time to that. I can also choose to enforce the custom block list that I've created, and I can allow my students to raise their hand electronically if I want to. And I'm going to hit Start. And now you see that my class has started, and you can see that Kenan and Darren are both on their Chromebooks already. Notice that they're both not on anything to do with music or even music theory at all. One is on the Broadway Playbill site and the other one's on Georgia Baseball. Crazy guys, what do they think they're doing? Well that's okay. Let's say I want to get their attention at the beginning of class and I want to get their attention so I can do some teaching. Well I'm going to choose Screen Lock here. Do I want to apply this to the whole class? I'm going to say yes and then I can put in whatever message I want to here. Eyes up. And I'm going to say screen lock. And you'll see that those devices are now locked down. If you could see the Chromebook that I have in front of me, you would actually be able to see that it actually says eyes up and has that big triangle on there. Now, if one of these students tries to go to another URL or open up another tab or do anything, it's still going to come up with that block screen. They are locked out. When I am done doing my teaching or I'm done with uh, whatever I need to do with the students, I can release that. And once again, it's going to say, hey, do I want to do that to the whole class? And I can say yes. And now the students go right back to where they had finished. If you had noticed, I, that option comes up saying, hey, do I want to do it to the whole class or not? And I can say yes or no. If I want to just lock down an individual student, all I have to do is click on them, make sure I have the green check mark, and I can say lock down. And now Keenan is locked down. He can't do anything, but Darren is still able to go on and do what he wants to do. And I'm going to release that. All I had to do was just hit that lock button, and it released Keenan. The other thing I can do is I can push out URLs. At any point I can click on here and I'm going to do this to the whole class and I can say yes and notice I have a couple of options here. If I forgot to create the web link inside of the web links feature area, no problem. This is where I can put in that URL, name it, and I can add it or I can choose from the list that I have here. And I'm going to push out these websites, this collection that I call John Philip Sousa. And I'm going to say push URL. And now you're going to see my students. They're going to open up those websites. And you see that they actually showed up right there. Now the website that shows up on top is the website that the student actually has open. That's the website that the student is actively looking at, is the one that's on top. And you can see that Darren switched over to the Wikipedia page of John Philip Sousa right now. Now, at any point though, I can sit there and I can close out any tab. I can look over here and I can say, what's Keenan doing on that Playbill tab? I'm going to close that. I just hit the trash can and now that tab is gone. Okay. You also have another view that you can use as a teacher. Now, I like using this tab view right here because that shows me exactly what tabs the student has across the top of their browser there and what they have open. You do also have a screen view that you can look at. If you come over here to these two boxes, I can collect this other box here 
and I can see a screen view and I can see that Keenan is now on the CHS Wind Ensemble site, which is just fine. And Darren is on that Wikipedia site. It also gives me the time that they checked in and stuff like that. I'm going to go back to tab view. And I'm going to have my students, you know, kind of looking around and I'm just kind of watching what my students are doing. I've given them instructions and all of a sudden I see Darren is on Georgia baseball again. What am I going to do with that kid? This time I'm going to hit this big eye right here. And this is device view. And you can see now I'm seeing exactly what Darren is seeing on his device. And he's on the baseball, you know, site. And he's just kind of roaming around there, and it looks like he's going to bring up the roster. Yeah, look at that. He's got the roster going on that site. And so they're looking at, you know, he's looking at different students and, and what they're doing on their websites. And I can sit there at this point. I can come up here and I can say save screen. And I can click that right there. And at the top here, you see it says screen successfully saved to student session details. And I've saved that screen. Now that I've saved that screen, I can chat with Darren and ask him to stay off that site. So I can choose chat. You can see I've already asked him one time and I can say again. Stay off the UGA baseball site. And I can send that to him. And Darren's little blue chat comes up. And he can reply, OK. I can hit send. And he hits send and it replies back to me. There's OK. Now, something about chats. Chats can only be initiated by the teacher. Chats have to be specifically between the teacher and the student. They can't go between students. So it's only initiated by the teacher and it's only between the teacher and the student. Once the chat is done, both parties can click out of it and get away from it. Now. At this point, I want to see Darren's history. I want to see what's going on with Darren. I can come up here and I can go to history and I can see the history. I can see the command stuff that I've pushed out to him. And I can see those save screens would be right there. And I can see that chat history. Really kind of neat in what it's showing me there. At this point, I want to close that baseball tab on Darren. So I can come down here to open tabs and I can hit that trash can again and it gets closed. Now, if I want to keep Darren permanently off of there from now on, I can go back here to web links. I can go back to my custom block list here and I can say add from recently closed. And right there, that UGA site's going to come up in a little while. Going back to teacher tools. Some other things that we can do with the students is we can do a site lock. This is where we can lock the students into 1, 2, 3, 10, 20 websites, and that's all that they can get to. To do a site lock, all I'm going to do is click on it and say, yes, I want to do this to the whole class. I can choose, at this point, I'm going to choose that NASA website that I created. And then I have some other options here. I can force close all other tabs. I can set a max limit on how many tabs they have open. And I can either allow just that specific page or I can open up the whole website. I'm going to choose the force close all of the other tabs and I'm going to choose the entire site. And I'm going to say site lock. And you'll see on my students, on their tabs, 
it shows that they're locked now, and it closed all the other tabs down. And because I did say, you know, let's open up the whole thing, they are able to navigate around to whatever sites they need to as long as they stay within that domain. You can see that Darren's moving around a little bit here. He's look at, looking at some different things as we look at that screen view. Really neat thing to do. Now, once again, if Darren tries to open up another tab or Keenan tries to open up another tab, they cannot get there. It'll give them a warning and an error message, and they are locked into here. When we are finished, we just hit release, and hit yes, and they are done. Okay. Another tab we have is announce. And if I wanted to announce to the class something like, hey, remember your test tomorrow, I can go announce. I can say, Yes, type in whatever message I want to. And hit announce. And you'll see the message that comes up on their screen here. And it shows that there's an announcement there. Now, if one, the student must acknowledge it. And they'll acknowledge it, and you'll see that it goes away. If we're in tab view, you'll see that they have kind of that bullhorn right there. It'll show that that student has not yet acknowledged that announcement. Really kind of a neat system here. The other buttons that you have right here is you have, like we've already talked about, the device view. This is history, so we can look at the history of where Darren or any other student is gone. That includes command, including history. That includes chat and save screens. You can also export this history out into a CSV file if you need it for later on. The other button we have here is we have a chat button, which we've already talked about. And you can get access that either from device view, chat right there, or you can do that from the other view, from the tab view or screen view. Notice here in device view, we also have a print button. I'm going to go back there. The other thing that you have here is a pin. This allows you, if you have a class of like 35 um, students or so, and you've just got a couple of those problem childs, you can pin them to the top. And just by hitting the pin, it moves that student to the top. Now the last student you pin will become the first student in the list. When you unpin them, they go back to their normal areas. Another thing your students can do if you've enabled it at the beginning of the class is they can literally raise their hand to get your attention electronically. All the student has to do is go to the classroom extension on their browser, click on it, and if you've enabled it, they've gotten a but they get a button that says raise hand. They click on that raise hand, and you'll see the hand raise on your screen. You can see it there. Now I can click on it, and it will clear that raised hand for me. And I can either chat with the student or I can go up to the student and talk to them. Also, one more thing before I stop this teacher tool session. One of the best practices is that you will need to do. If you have something going on, like if you've got a site lock going on, or if you've got, um, you've locked a student into something, please, before your class ends, please release them. Just hit the release button so everybody can get released. And also before the students close their lid on their device. In a perfect world, yes, when the class stops automatically, it sends a release button. But sometimes Mr. Electron gets crazy and just does whatever he wants to, and the command doesn't get sent out to him. So please, hit release before you hit stop class. 
that really helps clear things out and makes it simple. So I'm going to stop this class, and that's the end of our teacher tools session.